Greetings. <clears throat> Today I'm coming at you with a 2014 F350 with the 67 power stroke. Um I learned this is the second uh truck I've had recently. The other one was a 2015 F350 with a 6.2 liter gas XLT. This one's a Lariat. And from coming to that truck to this truck, I've learned a lot as far as configurations and options and utilizing this software called Forescan to enable those features through the uh, body control module, IPC, PCM. Very first thing that comes to mind right here is this wooden heated steering wheel that was not uh, optioned on a Lariat, only available on a Platinum and some King Ranches. And right here, I put the nice wood trim in, door trim, because when I bought the Lariat, it only had a wooden trim here, which was a different design, and I thought that was kind of cheap, because this was just a white, <clears throat> kind of like a gray thing there, a gray thing there. So, after I did that, I outsourced this steering wheel, brand new, <laughs> Paid 400 bucks for it. My old Lariat black leather one, I sold for 300 to someone out of the country. So, there you go. But I just wanted to let you know that I was able to enable that middle option here, right there, heated steering wheel through the 4Scan software. Um, there's a lot of things that you could buy aftermarket, that's OEM, install it, and it will not work. Because it has to be enabled through the computer. Um, my XLT, for example, uh, I put in the fog lights. It was a base model XLT, no fog lights. I put in the fog lights, and when you buy the fog lights from Ford, you get a brand new switch uh, that comes with an auto uh, auto light thing, and you got to put a sensor in up there. Again, not this truck. This is my XLT. And when I put it in, the lights just stayed on all the time. And the delay didn't work or anything. So I brought the truck to Ford to have them enable it. They screwed it up. And then I had to bring it back, and then they figured it out. So I just wanted to show you, I believe it's in the body control module. Hit play on Forescan here. Right there. Fog lamp. Enabled. Ambient light sensor present auto lamp delay switch enabled by switching that on again having ford do it and they charge me a buck 50 to do it and the lights themselves i think are i i think it was 100 bucks for everything so 250 dollars later you know four scans completely free all i had to buy was this uh obd2 sensor there ms slash uh what is it there's two different network protocols, and one's called MS, and I believe the other one's called CAM, maybe, CAN, something like that, and depending on what you're trying to change or modify, uh, you would, the computer would tell you to switch it to the other setting if you need to, buy that toggle switch down there, and a couple other things you could change, like tire size, you can only change the tire size to what Ford has offered on their trucks, so for example, if you click on it, here's your options. This came with 20 inch tires. I didn't touch it, so I had no reason to touch that. 355 axle, you can absolutely change that if you must. By modifying these settings here, you're not going to ruin other features of your truck. This is the body control module configuration. I call it the dummy version or foolproof. As you can see, there's a body control module as built Ford or as built format, hit play, and it even tells you right here, you know, switching things, blah, 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 could not, could you could screw it up. And that's simply because it's all numbers. Now, there's been some gentlemen that have gone out of their way drastically to configure, to figure out what these values mean. And, um... They offer this software 
to us, free of charge. You get a two-month trial, they call it a trial edition license, but it is actually a full license that'll last two months, simply because they don't want, and I don't blame them, <clears throat> they don't want this to just be available, you know, they don't want to give you a full life subscription because they just don't want it to be available to the wrong hands. Because you could do things like reprogram and delete keys like Ford can. Uh, if, you, if, you, if you're familiar with the way Ford programming keys work to like someone who doesn't have this, you would need two keys that came with the truck or two program keys to program a third and fourth key. Whereas this, if you only have one key, you have you could delete it. You can delete the key, add a key. I believe this software will not let you delete all keys. Because I did... This truck came with three... I bought this truck used. It came with one key. I made them copy a new key for me because I said, I want two keys with this truck. So they did that. And then I said I had three admin keys. So I was able to delete all the keys, program the two I had, and then I had two keys. I actually went out of my way and bought two more keys, had them cut by a locksmith, came home, Programmed them through this, and I now have four keys. Uh, another thing that my XLT didn't have was uh, remote start. <coughs> Apologize, I'm sick. Nothing to do today, so I figured I'd make this video. Uh, didn't have remote start. Uh, if you go on eBay, you could buy a kit depending on if you want one key with the button, two keys with the buttons. Uh, I believe it's 100 bucks for one key or 200 bucks for two keys. And then the only additional part is a antenna that you install in your glove box. Right up, probably under that Super Duty logo that's very, very easy to access. Again, that has to be enabled through your computer here. Now, I don't remember if that's in body control. Let's see. Um, not seeing it here, so we simply hit stop. Go to another function, maybe IPC, um, not seeing it here either, let's try the PC, uh, I'm going to go with the APIM, sync to version, that simply asks what kind of radio you have, um, no, but here, this is where I was able to enable my steering wheel, like I mentioned before. Probably PCM, then. TCM, I believe, is a transmission. Um, PCM. Did it load? have to come back to it. My apologies. Uh, I got an error that said battery voltage was too low. So I, I simply just turned it on. Uh, careful when you modify things with the vehicle on. I don't recommend it. Just do key on. However, this will let you do it. <coughs> I believe it was under PCM. I'm having a little, little problem opening it right now. So I'm just going to continue on. But it's just simply enabling remote start. And then the second option is to enable remote start menu, which is simply, do you want to run your truck for 5, 10, or 15 minutes? That's, enabling the menu would enable you to be able to do it through here. Um, another thing I changed was on this truck right here. Um, he has an XLT, 6.2 gas, came with a stock radio, nothing fancy. I took the radio that was in my... Uh, XLT that I put into that truck. It was a Lariat radio. Pulled it out, put it into his before I traded it in. And he had an XLT loaded, so he had the fog lights, remote start, and everything. And on his dash cluster there, he had a compass and uh, temperature. It's simply not on here because it's all here. So, because his radio now has the compass in it, it was causing an issue here where his compass was flashing north-south, north-south, and it really wasn't working right. I was able to turn off the compass through a uh, four-scan here. I don't know if it was under here. Um, 
me see. I believe that was also EPIM or IPC rather. Well, we've got to stop the other one we were in. Now we can go to IPC. Uh, cluster compass display disabled. Now, there's a lot more features you can enable, disable, parameters you can set through the other way with those fancy numbers and stuff. That's why you would use that. This is just a couple generic things that you could turn on and off, like your hour meter or your idle hour meter. And I believe there's a way to even reset those parameters. That's that's why they don't want it just out there to change, because you could mo probably modify your mileage and stuff too. Um, let's see, force regeneration request, so, this is one big thing to me before I deleted, that I was able to see my exhaust filter, uh, percentage full, it's reading 0% full now, because there is no filter, I ripped it out, did a delete, and I... I'm going to leave it on just in case, you know, I could cycle through it and if someone ever asks a question, yep, exhaust filter's not full. That's just another another way for me to, if someone were to question me about it, <clears throat> it's not like it's, they don't, it's not obvious, it's, it's obvious that it's not there, but you know what I'm saying, it's just one extra step. Um, so I did the remote start, the fog lights, the compass, this, this, now, my other truck didn't have an electronic lock and axle, and that was also disabled through uh, the computer. I put the axle in. The only the only thing is I couldn't hook it up because there was no pre-existing wiring. There was, the harness just wasn't there tied off. It, but, you know what I'm saying to connect into the axle. So, unfortunately, if I was able to hook it up, I would have been able to. Uh, do it. I actually just went out of my way, bought a switch, figured out which two prongs closed the axle, got a wiring diagram, all of that, and I was able to just pull the switch out and the axle would lock. It was pretty cool. And um, my next upgrade will be a new fuel tank on this truck. Right now, the front fuel tank is 26 gallons. It's a short bed with a diesel deep. EF tank is in the way. Titan Fuel Tanks makes a 50 gallon tank for this truck. Even though I don't need the DEF tank anymore because it's deleted, I'd rather leave it anyway. I tried to get a long bed, 37 and a half gallon under this truck. Not that I bought it and went out of my way to try it, but I did some measurements and everything, and, and it's not going to work even if I pulled the DEF tank out. DEF tank is immediately behind the fuel tank, and the extra capacity of the bigger tank would hit my uh, f frame rail fuel pump. The Titan tank, if you find a picture of it, it actually starts to wrap around the fuel pump. So it's actually pretty cool. And the other thing I noticed, it's pretty cool, front, if you hit the front fuel tank, I, will, I guess Ford offered a 50 gallon tank. So when I get the tank, I'm going to say I have 50 gallons, and all that's going to do is change the number to distance to empty. I did it before I read about 350. Let me, you know, I'll turn, I'll do it right now. I'm just gonna do key on only. So I'll show you. 173 miles E on half a tank. Change it to 50. Oh, and then you hit right. And then you confirm your value change. Right. Please cycle off and then back on. Now we have 333 miles to E, assuming we had a 50 gallon tank under there. So, we'll just put the fuel tank back to 26 for now since it's not there yet. Um, whoops. Jumping my mouse here. 26, oh, okay, and then we're going to hit right, see that's a good thing, I, you saw me just make an error, and it's making sure that I'm only changing from a 50 to a 26 gallon tank, alright, key off, back on, okay, 
fuel economy. Now we're back to 173. Sweet. Um, guys that have LED lights, there's a way to turn off your uh, light out quick flash. When your bulb blows out, the light, lights flash fast, and an LED light will draw less, so it will flash fast. You can turn all that off through here. I didn't because I, not knowing about all this at the time, I had already put resistors in. All right. Um, I'll be honest, I have not messed with all these things here. DTCs, this is pretty cool. Driver dual climate control seat module. I was having a problem where sometimes the butt warmer wasn't working all the time, the AC cooler wasn't working all the time, and right there it's telling me my voltage is out of range on that seat. So, that, that makes sense. I gotta, I'm, I'm, if I had to take a guess, the heater is drawing too much. That's my guess. I don't really know how they cool the seats. But, uh, all the other seats, this one has rear seat, rear heated seats, this truck. They all chooch except mine. So, that's one thing to look at, too. Alrighty here. Wish there was something, eh, there might be something I could open. This is the configuration tab. And then you hit stop, of course. You gotta hit stop before you can continue on any other block here. Um, transmission control module. I don't know what you would change. I'm, you know, I'm not even going to open that. Uh, HVAC is only as built format. GPSM, I don't know what that is. DCSM, I don't know what that is. DSM, I don't know what that is. ABS, self explanatory. RCM module, I don't know what that is. Driver belt minder. Of course, that's disabled. I don't need nobody telling me to wear a seatbelt. ABS trailer brake trailer brake control module equipped. Yes, we are. We are equipped. Maybe I can get the PCM to open now. It still says executing. Let's just wait a second. Maybe there's a lot of stuff to open on there. Be careful. Like I said, I I don't think it will allow you to edit something the style that I just showed you if it was going to disrupt something. Um, just trying to think what else I've done. I'd, I'd like to share my experiences with you people. There's two things I've, I've learned that I would change differently. Number one would be, you know, buy those on the old truck, put the fog lights in, use the software. Put the remote start in, use the software. The second, the second thing I learned is buy a freaking truck with all the shit in it. You know, I just made a snap decision, bought it. Happiest day of my life, right? Three years later, paid it off. And in between, did all these things. Lo still loved the truck, but I wanted a couple. I really wanted a diesel at the time, but it was just out of range price-wise. And I did get a good deal on that truck I bought. So then one day I was, you know, surfing the internet, and I found a Lariat with a diesel. And I was like, yeah, I'll go check it out. And it was really good. It was a really good price. Never in a million years would I thought I'd buy a Lariat, but hey. I'm happy with it. Sunroof and everything. Uh, this is an opening. I tried switching that switch down there. But it didn't... Didn't work for me. Let's try it. Unable to start the service procedure. I uh, wish I was able to show you this. But, any questions, shoot me a message. Thank you.